What's going on guys? So another week down in the books. It's that time of the week for the weekly rotation. And uh, this week I had quite the variety. A lot of cooler weather. I was able to go with some sweeter scents, some richer scents, some more floral heavy, some ouds, a little bit of everything. And I was able to still mix in some pretty good fresh stuff at the same time. So this is one of the better, more diversified weekly rotations I've had in some time. And look, they usually are pretty diversified, but this one, this one was extraordinary in my humble opinion, of course. And it's week number 153, so stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday, I was thrilled to go back to this one because it's just been too much for the warmer weather. It was nice to get some cold weather to pull out Afnan's 9 p.m. Really, really, really dig this stuff. I prefer it over what it's a clone of. That's Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultra Mayo. I just prefer the fruitiness of the apple over the pear, believe it or not. It's smoother overall. It's not as harsh and sharp at the top like Ultra Male. I'm not knocking Ultra Male, I do enjoy it. I just think this is a superior take on the DNA. Performance is ridiculous on this fragrance. My wife loves the way it smells. I absolutely adore the scent profile. It's just kind of floating around in the air. This is some good stuff. Uh, I've said a lot of good things about this at different points of this year. Most recently, I did a comparison between this and Ultra Male, and spoiler alert, I chose this as the clear cut winner. So you can get this one for a pretty good price in that $40 range, $40, $50 range for most discounters online. It's worth every penny in my experience. It was great to wear during the day, off and on, 9 p.m. Then we got out the shower. This was a random choice, something I haven't, I've been going back to occasionally in recent months, but it's not something I wear all the time. It's Carolina Herrera's CH Men Privé. Typically not something I'm going to wear just lounging around out the shower, but man, I was in the mood for it. Sweet, boozy, whiskey smell, nice soft leather, a little bit synthetic, sure, but man, this is just such an intoxicating and attractive scent profile. It's kind of a modern classic designer boozy fragrance. That's kind of how I look at it. When it comes to the modern, you know, the realm of when boozy fragrances started to really become popular in the last several years. I feel like this kind of set the tone for designer fragrances because this is one of the better ones still, even at this point. It's been around for many years at this point. Um, I forgot exactly when it came out, but I mean, it's not like it's two or three years old. It's older than that. This is some good stuff. Performance is pretty good without being super loud, but very intoxicating, very attractive, and totally not the best situation was what I wore it for. But then again, I just wear stuff for me in the first place. It's out the shower. CH Men, Privé. Moving into Monday, this is what I, based on data and analysis over the years that I've seen, this is the most hated in the fragrance community and one of the most loved by the masses. I actually just did a video on this. I'm talking about Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. This was an absolute joy to wear. My wife was very excited when she smelled me. She said, ooh, I, I know this one. What is that? And I told her what it was. She's like, yeah, you don't wear that enough. So there you go. It's good stuff. It's the spicy version. I say that because Elixir is actually the spiciest version, but this still maintains a lot more freshness than the Elixir. This and Elixir are the two spicy versions of the DNA. This one more so true to the original Sauvage Eau de Toilette, with Elixir being kind of a standalone in many ways. Very faint similarities in the DNA to Sauvage, but this is probably the most well-rounded of all of them. This one gets a lot of flack and it gets a lot of praise at the same time. From what I have noticed, I can't I haven't checked numbers to confirm this, but just from what I see amongst the fragrance community, this is probably the most popular one, more so than the Eau de Toilette. I see more posts about this one across different platforms of social media than any other version of Sauvage. And honestly, for as much as I love the Parfum, it is my favorite. To be honest with you, if I really could just pick one because of the versatility and how this one kind of checks all the boxes, I might have to go with this one. So, you know, it gets loved, it gets hated but it should definitely be appreciated. It's Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum during the day. Then we got the shower, like my go-to this year out the shower, Ferrari Radiant Bergamot. I've just been enjoying this one. Let's give it a couple sprays. Oh, man, that's some good stuff. Sharp, zesty, a little bitter, a lot of bergamot as you would expect by the color, by the name, some fresh green tones, a little bit of this herbal pedigree type of smell. 
a little soapy, not really, more zesty overall, zesty and herbal. This is just a beautiful fragrance. I love this stuff. I'm going to continue to put a bigger and bigger dent in this fragrance bottle the rest of the year and moving forward. I don't know when it's coming off the rotation table, if ever. I just really dig it. It's kind of the modern day Nautica Classic for me because in previous years Nautica Classic would stay on the rotation table and it would constantly be in the out the shower segments certain days in my weekly rotation. This has kind of taken its place and it's what I've been going to. I love this stuff. Out the shower, Ferrari, Radiant Bergamot. Moving into Tuesday, it was a nice crispy cool day. It was perfect for something resinous, smoky, and floral. So I went with Evening Mystique, my new fragrance in collaboration with Zaharoff. I've talked about it sporadically on the channel. Most of you have probably heard about it by now. Just good stuff. A nice, bright, aromatic tone of juniper berries without that heavy gin hit that juniper berries can be known for. A beautiful, fresh, spicy pop of coriander. You get a lot of coriander in the top. The carrot seeds and Florentine iris kind of work hand in hand to make more of a waxy and powdery iris this time around. It's not quite as creamy, but there's still a creaminess here, but you'll get a little bit of a waxy tone. A lot of resins here. They have murray, have olibanum resin, as well as frankincense, so heavy dose of smoky incense. If you like incense, you will love this fragrance because it's got two different types of incense in it as well as some Orconox gives a little bit of that ambergris and broxen family without really having any synthetic smell. A little bit of amber and musk, clean creamy patchouli. It's awesome. Can't wait for you guys to experience it during the day. Evening Mystique. Then we got the shower. It was time for a shave. I had not used this aftershave splash in quite a while and it's more than strong enough to where I didn't need a fragrance. This is Sauvage Aftershave Splash. Came in a gift set with these bottle of Sauvage Eau de Toilette that I have. It's been a little while. And look, this one, this one will wear your nose out quick. I go anosmic to this almost instantaneously. It is very fast. And I put, um, you know, a little bit of a dent in it. I've used it randomly throughout the couple of years that I've had it. it smells so good though. Especially when you first Splash it on your face and your neck and everything. It's got this warming quality doesn't have the alcohol sting too much It just smells amazing and then you don't smell it anymore because you get overwhelmed because it's so strong to splash this um, This splash is stronger is Damn near as strong as current bottles of the eau de toilette probably because it's part of a gift set where the batch code is from February of 2015 right around launch time for Sauvage. So even this aftershave splash, pretty damn strong. Out the shower, had a good shave. What was Sauvage, the after, aftershave splash. Moving into Wednesday, the weather kind of creeped up a little bit, got into the mid 60s. So I decided I wanted to go with something a little bit fresher because I had wore some slightly heavier, more spicy and resinous fragrances the last couple days. So it was easy to just reach for Mossy into me for men. Really, really love this stuff. Beautiful, juicy watermelon note and a lot of ginger. Man, I think I, that's why I like this fragrance so much and I keep going back to it, is the ginger. It's a beautiful, fresh ginger fragrance. I don't know how many of you get that much of the ginger on your skin. Um, actually, when I talked to Justin about it, he said he didn't get a ton of the ginger on his skin. I do. It really comes out on my skin from start to finish. I get the citruses. I get that blast, that juicy watermelon smell that everybody really enjoys about this opening that has tried this fragrance. But I'm telling you, it's crisp, bright, and fresh, spicy ginger through and through. It never goes away. It doesn't overtake the fragrance, but it's at the forefront with the citruses. The whole way through then it gets into some ginger and woods as it dries down clean musk just a great everyday wear great quality performance is just where it needs to be where it's very long lasting but it's not too loud man i i like this stuff more and more every time i spray it it gets better and better it's mossy into me for men then when i got out the shower this was on the rotation table i haven't been wearing it i was in the mood for a good lavender note i figured why not Boss Bottled Infinite. It's a great lavender note. Lovely olive tree note as well. Kind of gives this rich kind of oily facet and smell to it. And you still get that apple pie cinnamon smell that the original's known for. This is one of the better takes on the DNA. I've said that before and 
It still reigns true. This is one of the best boss bottled flankers that just doesn't get any love. It's not a cloying lavender where it's extremely soapy and too loud and very synthetic, like some cheaper hand soaps and stuff like that, like that type of lavender, no. It's richer overall. And I really think it's due to that olive tree note that's in here because it has that kind of that tone to what, think a jar of quality olives, that kind of oily type of texturing to it, the olive oil, if you will, it kind of gives that olive oil feel to it. In the scent profile, you can actually pick that up in the scent profile and it richens it up and thickens up the aroma. It's just lovely. This is a beautiful fragrance, decent performance, nothing really strong, but nothing really weak either. It was great out the shower. And that's Boss Bottled Infinite. Moving into Thursday, this is one that I've had for a few months and I finally got around to doing a full wearing and I love this fragrance. It's not quite as dressy as I initially thought it would be. It was fine casually with a, with a hoodie. I can see where it would dress up pretty good still. It's piney green, very woodsy, a lot of leather. Opt on Supremacy Noir, one that does not get any love. I've seen comparisons to Bottega Veneta. I've never tried Bottega Veneta pour home, so I have no idea how accurate that is. But this is good stuff. Very deep, rich, earthy, piney green. Earthy tones, a little smoky even, and piney green. Leathery feel, rich and thick, kind of dense overall. Very heavy, woodsy tone to it. This is some really good stuff. Great for the cooler weather great for the cooler weather i don't just deem it to be nighttime daytime cold absolutely does the trick it did for me like i said i rocked it with a hoodie enjoyed it i only did three three around the neck and then two half sprays you know half spray on each side of the neck again for a total of four sprays technically so three and then half half you know because you know you can kind of control it a little bit that was kind of a half spray Man, good, good, good stuff. And you can get this one for like 25 bucks from just about everywhere online from discounters. Does not smell cheap. Does not smell overly synthetic. Performs great. Not a, an overall beast. I wouldn't call this beast mode, but I would definitely call this on the above average, a very strong side in longevity and projection. In sillage, it's dense. The density of the oils and the way they blended this with the oil concentration, the aroma overall has a thickness to it. And, uh, it stands out and it doesn't smell like everything else. Definitely on the more masculine and mature side. Not a playful fragrance, but a damn good one. Damn good one. Enjoyed this one. Definitely gonna be wearing it again here in the next few days, probably. Off non Supremacy Noir. Then when I got out the shower, I don't know why I was in the mood for this, but this might be the best version of CK1 Summer. It's the newest one, Summer Days. It's just so good to come quiet in here. It's, so, it's got a zest to it, a little bit of a sweet tone. It's fresh and zesty, but still has this mouth-watering, almost tart sweetness to it. This is a lovely fragrance. I paid 40 bucks when this first hit Nordstrom Rack Online. And to be honest with you, if this hits the rack stores for 20 bucks really soon, I'll probably buy another bottle because I can see myself especially once I move back down south and I'm in that high heat and humidity again, using the hell out of this, more so than the 2021 because the 2021 is still kind of my favorite. It's still the one I go to the most. I like to wear it to the gym. I like to wear it out the shower. During the high heat when it was summertime, I was enjoying it. This year, I got this at the tail end when it really wasn't that hot anymore. But I tell you what, out the shower, this one smells incredible. And I can see myself going back and back and back over and over to reach for this one. It's it's a great fragrance. It's a it's on the weaker side of performance, sure. I mean, that's what they are. They're mega fresh. They don't last that long. But I'll tell you what, for the time that you do smell it, it smells incredible. Out the shower, CK1, summer days. Moving into Friday, it got down into the low 30s, even into feels like the, the mid-20s for most of the day. It was very cold and I got very excited because this is one I've been eager to wear. I'm actually gonna be featuring it in an upcoming video for winter fragrances that I'm really excited to start wearing. And this, I had some winter weather. So I pulled out Raja Parfum's Amber Oud. Anybody that has smelled this, you understand why I was so giddy and excited to wear this. This is, in my opinion, 
It, how about this? This is in based on my experience with every Oud Rose combination I have personally smelled, hands down the clear cut best one I've ever put my nose on. I haven't even come close to smelling every Oud Rose combination out there. There's countless. There, there was a hype train for a few years of just everybody putting out Oud Rose. Look, I got a ton of great niche Oud Roses, but this has got to be the best one. It's got a little bit of the Oud funk, but the quality here, whew, man, thick, deep, rich, jammy rose, ambery smell, rich and warm, without a ton of spice, very deep, very rich, thick, strong aroma, dark juice. It actually came with a warning to not spray your clothes because it'll probably stain them because of the coloring of this oil. I did three sprays and again, an additional half spray on each side, just like I did with the Afnan fragrance. And I could smell myself all day long. You don't need a lot. The sillage is magnificent on this fragrance. It's a parfum. I don't know the exact oil concentration. This is a pricey fragrance, but I'll tell you what, there's certain fragrances that you come across that you're like, you know, I, I get why they want to charge a lot for that. Did it cost them this much to make this fragrance? No, of course not even with the presentation and everything. You gotta put a value on something on what you deem it to be valuable enough to command. And I could see why this is, you know, several hundred dollars. This is an expensive fragrance. And as soon as I posted it as my scent of the day on IG, I had a lot of people come out saying yes and hand claps and this is my favorite of the house and I wore that today too, it's amazing. Ah, that's my favorite Oud Rose. All the things I'm saying, I was getting a lot of that same feedback the day I, uh, that I posted it as my scent of the day. I've only worn this maybe a handful of times since I got it. And I'm pretty excited to reach for it a good bit this winter coming up because in the cold, it cuts through it greatly. It's such an intoxicating oud fragrance overall. Even though it's called amber oud, amber's not at the forefront. The oud and the rose definitely are. And there's still an amber warmth to it, don't get me wrong, but like I said, oud rose. The main things you're gonna get it sticks around the whole time and it is absolutely fan freaking tastic. During the day, I was loving every second of wearing Raja Parfum's Amber Oud. Then when I got out the shower, I went with something totally opposite. Went from super high quality to super synthetic and cheap with Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct Together. Just featured this in my monthly gym rotation. And I figured why not? I'll just rock this again out the shower. It's good stuff. I only did three or four sprays for the little bit of time it was on my skin. I was loving smelling it on my skin. I went from just the most intoxicating of high quality luxury niche to just the most enjoyable of cheap synthetic Abercrombie and Fitch. You know, this, ah, uh, man, it was just such a great day for me. Two of my personal favorites, one of my absolute favorite luxury fragrances, one of my absolute favorite cheap fragrances. It was a great day to be me, what can I say? Out the shower. Abercrombie and Fitch first instinct together. Finally, today, on Saturday, at the recording of this, it's Saturday. Haven't taken my shower yet. Still wearing my scent of the day currently. I did three sprays. I hate the atomizer on this one though. That's the only downside. Like I gotta really like go in the distance here because it's a tight stream. And it's not every bottle from them. It's just this specific one. But I went with Amarud White Hanoki. I mentioned this one recently in a video and it's been sitting on my rotation table and I figured why not? And I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but it damn near sprayed the window. God, it smells good though. And the sillage on this one is great. I can get a light whiff of it just from doing that. And it's been on my neck for about seven hours now, roughly. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, six hours, something like that. Still going strong. Very, very strong. I forgot the oil concentration on this one. I want to say it's a parfum. Yeah, it says right here on the bottom that it's a parfum. I don't know the exact oil concentration, but that tells me it's at minimum 25%. And it acts as such. It's this beautiful citrus, boozy, woody smell. There's a little bit of a, a green herbal fresh feel in this scent profile, but it's mainly about, about the Hinoki wood, as the name would dictate. And like I said, this particular wood is very very specific with the way it smells. Like I said, it's got this rich citrusy smell and it's also a little sweet boozy at the same time. It's a strange wood, but it's a delightful wood. I could see how some may deem this a little on the feminine side, but I absolutely adore it. I haven't worn it in a long time. It was nice to rock it today and uh, probably be another two or three hours before I jump in the shower. It's early in the evening. 
Uh, the sun just went down, so I'm probably going to continue to enjoy this for a few more hours. But during the day, I'm a rude white hanoki. And then when I got out the shower, when I get out the shower in a little bit, I've already picked what I'm going to rock. Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct, the original. I have not wore this in some time. I hardly wear this one. I wear blue to the gym all the time. I rock together on a regular basis. But I don't spend enough time with the original DNA. This beautiful kind of coconut, melon, juicy, watery smell. It's good stuff. A little musky. It's got this coconut milk type of vibe in there as well. The extreme version is much more musky, thick and creamy and spicy overall. This is the fresher take, obviously. Performance isn't ridiculous, but it's decent. It's like a four to five hour fragrance on my skin, maybe even creep into the six hour mark, especially if you spray your clothes. It's good stuff. It doesn't really get talked about. And you know, the whole line is good. All four of them are really good fragrances. This is one of my favorite cheap fragrance lines. I believe the line is discontinued. I'm not confirming that because I'm not certain of it. I've heard that it is. I'm just glad I have big bottles of stuff like this and multiple bottles of my favorites. Um, just a really good fragrance. I, I felt it was time. I was thinking, what can I wear tonight? It caught my eye. So why the hell not? So in a little bit when I take a shower, when I get out, I'll be rocking Abercrombie and Fitch. First Instinct, the original. Well, that is this past week's rotation. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. What'd you guys wear this week? Did you happen to match with anything I wore this week. Did you wear any of these fragrances at any given point? I'd love to read about that. It's very coincidental. It does happen from time to time with you guys. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances that I just wore and you give them a spray now, pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys.